This episode of Let's Knit Together is sponsored by YarnMarket.com. Fabulous fashions, fast and friendly. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, well, my name is Annie Modisette, and I'm a hand knit designer, but I also do crochet, and I teach, and I write, but I think... I actually think my greatest love is the teaching. I love to interact with the students and it always gives me amazing ideas when I go teach and then I come home and I'm filled with a lot of energy. I get energy from my students. Well, how did you get started in the knitting world? Well, it's really funny. I, um, I taught myself to knit. I had a friend who showed me the knit stitch and then I moved to Texas the next day. And um, I played around with the knit stitch that she showed me and uh, I figured out the pearl but it was backwards it was you know quote wrong so I was knitting in a knitting vacuum for a year I didn't have anyone to tell me I was wrong I just got really fast and really good and my work was beautiful and then when I moved from Texas back to New York City I got a job working at Vogue Knitting because I began submitting designs and they hired me to do some technical editing stuff and that's when we all discovered that I knit wrong and I was so uh, what's the word I'm looking for I was so stubborn I wouldn't change how I knit because it was beautiful. Why change what's working well? But I couldn't get anyone to admit that what I was doing was okay. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, there was so much, um, this is hard to express, but when you do something that you know is so natural to you, but the world tells you it's wrong, I don't like to compare knitting, which is a recreational activity, to something more serious, but it's almost as if you fall in love with someone and the world tells you you shouldn't, mm -hmm. you know? I wasn't going to give it up just because the world said I shouldn't. And I kept trying and the anger was there and I was frustrated and I didn't know how to deal with it and I did end up actually stopping knitting for about 10 years. It was, you know, maybe it was a good thing because it kind of taught me how much I really do love it. Um, I picked up a copy of Interweave Knits in 2000 and there was an article by Priscilla Gibson Roberts who is my heroine and more people should know about her because I think she's really one of the amazing godmothers of knitting, you know, internationally. Um, I picked up an article by her and she actually wrote about my way of knitting. It had a name, it was legitimate, it's absolutely fine. She said good things about it. And so I decided I would devote my career to letting people know that there is no wrong way to knit. There's no wrong way to do anything. And, I, and I'd read Elizabeth Zimmerman and yes, she says there's no wrong way to knit. But when you turn the page, she says there is a wrong way to purl, and that kind of, you know. Um, so uh, what I decided to do is I, I wrote a book, Confessions of a Knitting Heretic. It's sold almost 60,000 copies now, which is great for a self-published book. And when I teach knitting, I don't teach people to knit like me. You know, I show them what I do, and I show them how they could do that. But I say to them, it's as if you have been speaking English your whole life, and then you take a class in French or a class in German or whatever somehow learning a different language sometimes allows you to understand the grammar and the architecture of your own language better. Right. So if someone is what's called a Western knitter, which is the most common way of knitting, and they take a class with me and learn combination knitting, even if they never become a combination knitter, that's fine with me. What they learn in that class will help them become a more intuitive knitter because they'll understand the grammar and the architecture of their stitches. So that's my goal as a teacher. I actually took took your book and I, I, I actually found that it was much better to knit combination when you're using ribbon yarns. Have you ever heard it's, that? Yes, it's really helpful because there's less manipulation of the yarn. You don't twist it around as much. Ribbon yarns, wire yarns, any kind of odd novelty it seems to work beautifully with. And the nice thing about combination knitting is um, often people have this, this thing happen to them where if they knit in the round and then they split and they work a front and a back on the sweater, so a sweater is partially in the round and partially on straights or partially back and forth, it looks really different. But with combination knitting, because the purl stitches most exactly match the amount of yarn you're using in the knit stitches, which is not the same for Western knitting, what happens is your back and forth knitting really looks like your circular knitting. And that's been amazing for a lot of people who take my class. You also have a creative design approach. You always seem to find <laughs> either different things to knit that most people wouldn't think of, like perhaps a chair. Yes, or... I, I, if I could pick this up, I'll show you my chair. <laughs> This is from a book that um, Shannon Oki wrote called uh, How to Knit in the Woods or 
I, I think she wanted to call it what a bear knit in the woods, but yeah. they wouldn't let her call it that, so <laughs> I still think of it like that. But I use nylon twine quite a bit to knit furniture, because the beautiful part about nylon is if you pour boiling water on it, it it shrinks. Right. So if you use it for like a, a hard chair seat, like a kitchen chair seat or something, and then you put boiling water on it, it shrinks up and it becomes as firm as any kind of wicker seat. It's wonderful. Well, how did you get started doing that or what inspired you? Well, my background's in theater. I have a degree in costume and set design and I have done a lot of work in costume history and I've done a lot of set design and that frees up your mind. You know, it's, it's a great thing. I'm working on a book right now. It's taking me longer to write it because I've run into a few health issues. I'm obviously fabulous, but <laughs> I'm slower than I was. And um, the book is uh, called History on Two Needles, and the whole concept of the book is using uh, paintings, sculptures, uh, funeral effigies, images from history reinterpreted as modern knit designs, and then here's the catch, that you would not be embarrassed to wear down the street. <laughs> because anyone can take a knit, you know, like make a knitted costume, like, you know, the Renaissance Fair. I'm hoping these will be things that will actually be pretty and flattering and look good in a lot of different figure shapes because here's a little secret about fashion. Fashion changes. You might not have the body for what's currently in fashion. If it's 1910 and you look horrible in something with a higher waist, you're out of luck. If it's 1950 and you have a thick, thicker waist and you don't have larger hips, you're kind of straight up, down, you're out of luck. You know, too bad you weren't born in the 20s. <laughs> right now, we live in an amazing time in history. It's never been like this before in the history of mankind or womankind, which is two women can walk down the street wearing totally different length skirts, totally different height waistbands, you know, different everything, and they can both be at the height of fashion. That's never happened before. You know, it, there's always been like the skirt length for this year. So the last 15 years have been a beautiful time. What I want to do with the book is introduce people to the idea that you don't have to wear what every, everyone is wearing right now. You need to find what works well on your body, and then you make that. That's the point of knitting, to make things that fit you. So, for instance, if I could show you this, this is, it's, it's kind of been through the ringer a little bit, so I apologize for any. This is um, a jacket that's based on a painting of Anne Boleyn. So I did the Tudor square neckline, and I used the colors and the, the gem use, you know, of, of the Bolin bodice. I put a zipper in it because I find that very flattering. Better than the laces. Well, yeah, better than the laces. <laughs> but the nice thing about this is it's, it's a flattering piece and it's crocheted. It has some shaping to it, but you don't have to make it skin tight. Because you know, as a woman, we all know, if we're honest with ourselves, if you wear something that fits you, you look like you've lost 10 pounds. <laughs> you know, and if you wear something huge and oversized, you look bigger than you are. One of the best pieces so far, it's a pattern I'm already selling, it's been one of the best pieces, is a hood and a dress that I made that's based on the funeral effigy of the Black Prince. I think he would have been Edward III, but he died before he was, you know, made, made king. Um, his funeral effigy is at the uh, Kent, uh, Kentbury Cathedral, and I got to visit it last year, which was wonderful for me. And so I did a dress with a jacquard pattern. It's like a tunic, it's like a knight's tunic, and um, I used the Plantagenet lions and the fleur-de-lis because, you know, they had both, both it, it's basically what he's wearing on his effigy. Here are the Plantagenet lions, and they're here, so they're in the red for, for England. And then in the blue sections are the fleur-de-lis. And depending on how the light hits it, it's very, very visible. It's kind of a, kind of a crapshoot sometimes. The pearl stitches are the actual. Exactly. And I taught, I, I, I learned a new, a new thing as I was working this up, which is as you're doing a jacquard pattern, um, if you twist the stitch, not every single stitch, but all of the stitches around the edges, yes. right. it makes it stand out. And what I did with this, which is one of my favorite things to do, I ribbed the entire back. And what's nice about that is it makes it have a beautiful fit without being horribly uncomfortable. And what I'd love to do now, if it's okay, I'm going to put the hood on. <laughs> so anyway, it's maybe one of the most flattering things I've ever designed. <laughs> now, it's great. I live in Minnesota, you know, and when I wear this, people think that I can fight dragons, and it's great. But it's, it's a fun knit. A lot of people have bought the patterns, and 
surprise, surprise, everyone keeps writing to me that their kids love it. You know, men and kids love this this thing. So this is this is a pattern that's already out from History on Two Needles. I probably look like a. I I love how the, you got the the shape of the helmet top as if it was a metal hat. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like a chain metal hat. Well, that you know that was that was that was the fun of it. It's just been such a. This book has been such a fun thing for me to do because as I work up each pattern and I also, what I did here is I, I did all of the increasing in the middle so that you get a lot of fullness here to tuck into your jacket. What I love to do is I love to knit up my own samples because as I knit them up, I begin to get a sense of what is going to, um, what's going to make a knit more fun. How can I change these increases a little bit so not only is it more intuitive, but it's more fun. So it's not just a plain, plain old straight up, do this, do this, do this, but it's like, you know what, here's a tip, try doing this, and then maybe I'll teach someone something cool as they're knitting it up, and they'll remember it as a really fun thing, because here's the secret, we think we knit to make things, we don't. We knit to make ourselves happy. And if a project doesn't make you happy, you are the one who has the power to change it and make yourself happy. Join us for our next live show Saturday, August 28th at 6 p.m. Eastern to share your latest projects and what you're planning on knitting for fall. Go to lessontogether.com slash live for complete details on how to participate. When Crystal Palace introduced Mini Mochi, I just flipped out and I bought it in lots of colors. It has really long color repeats, so it's not only great for socks, but looks really cool for shawls. Now Yarnmarket.com is offering Crystal Palace Mochi in chunky weight. It's perfect for those quick projects with a little excitement. Imagine a quick knit hat in this brandied apricot colorway, a perfect fall project. What about a chunky scarf in autumn rainbow colorway? A scarf like that would go with every outfit. Check out Yarnmarket.com for Crystal Palace Mini Mochi and Chunky Mochi. Also, there's a link in the show notes to a Yarn Market Spotlight on how Crystal Palace came about and a chance to win a Crystal Palace gift collection. You can find me on Twitter, Plurk, and Ravelry as Let's Knit Together. You can join our Facebook page at facebook.com slash let's knit together. And you can email me at cat at let's knit together dot com. In episode 77, we asked you to comment on your UFO projects. We got some great answers, including Deborah, who asked, can she count her husband as a UFO? And now, the winner of the Surrey Laceweight Yarn is Mrs. Tommy. The yarn is on its way to you right now. You can find me on Twitter, Plurk, and Ravelry as Let's Knit Together. Blech. <laughs> okay. How hot are you? I'm really sweaty. <laughs> I mean, I'm all in mohair. It's Sorry. really hot. Summertime, you're wearing that thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, we're done now. Okay, turn the camera off. <laughs>